if you want the speed of a script with the power of .NET, then I have good news for you. A single CS file becomes a real c -sharp program you can run, debug, and even publish. No CS project required. In this video, you will learn what are .NET 10 file-based apps, how to create them, how to run them in under one minute on Windows and Linux flavors, including some tasty Linux-specific tricks, more advanced topics on where exactly those apps live, how to manage disk cache, pass extra parameters, reference other projects, select different SDKs, allowing you to build apps that are beyond just terminal apps, how to grow your app when it doesn't fit into one file, and how to publish them. I will also cover which tools you can use to develop file-based apps and the current state of the ecosystem. So let's go. If you are a c -sharp fan, you probably know that feeling when a one-off utility is needed or some small custom CI logic, or you just want to share some work and example or even prototype something. Normally, I would think of creating a small console application project and then just give up and use Bash or PowerShell scripting or even Python for some use cases because they work straight away without creating a new project and managing all that stuff. File-based apps kind of changes that because now you can run a single CS file as is without creating and managing projects or any kind of tooling at all. All you need is two things. .NET 10 SDK installed locally, and any text editor. You'll see later that you can even remove the requirement for .NET SDK altogether. That's it. Getting an app running is actually quite simple. Let's say I need a utility that reads files in the current directory, then groups them by extension and simply displays size on disk occupied by each extension. Using c -sharp and Link, this task is actually really easy to achieve and the code is expressive and beautiful. So let's create a new c -sharp file, call it filegroup.cs and populate it with the following contents. What it does here is gets a current directory, uses get files, then group by in Link, create a new anonymous class for each group and orders in descending order. Then prints the result to the console. It's a beautiful mix of functional and procedural code, and it's easy to read as well. Note that there are no using directives in this file, so you might wonder how this works. Well, in file-based apps, the following namespaces are included by default because they're used so often that it would be like writing public static void main all over again. In fact, file-based apps follow the list of default namespaces, same as for Microsoft.NET.SDK project. By the way, SDK can be changed for file-based apps, but later on this. To run this, simply call .NET run filegroup.cs. The script will be compiled before the first time it's executed and we get the execution result. To point out, this is actually not a script. .NET SDK compiles the CS file to IL and executes the compiled binary. Hence, it's really fast. Some call it a script, but it's arguable. I guess you can call it a script for a .NET compiler, but the thing that actually runs is a fast optimized binary. You can run on Linux the same way as on Windows because .NET is cross-platform, but because Linux is a first-class citizen, single file apps have more features than Linux and then they do integrate natively rather than an afterthought. When I mean natively, I actually mean you can make CS files executable. To demonstrate, let's open filegroup.cs and do two things. First, add Unix shebang, making an association between .NET and this script. It's a standard Unix feature that existed for generations. Second is add the execute permission on the file. Now look, I can just run this file as is without typing .NET run. It actually looks like a proper Linux executable. Cool, isn't it? But wait, one more thing. If you want to make it even more real and indistinguishable from Linux, you can even remove the CS extension altogether. I've just made a copy of a .CS script, so I can just run it normally, and no one would even know it's a C-sharp program. Reading arguments is something you will do very often in terminal 
single filed apps. Other file based apps are not limited just to terminal. I doubt you will see non terminal applications developed this way. Using the previous example, if we want to optionally accept path to a folder, this can be done in the same way as a usual console application. Of course, you can also use any other command line parsing libraries of your choice, but for that you need to be able to reference external packages, which is fully supported as well. Referencing packages from nuget.org is also supported and it looks nice. To give you an example, I wanted to add argument handling using one of my favorite libraries like spectre.console.cli. But because it's an external package, I can't just use it. Therefore, I need to add a NuGet package reference using one of the preprocessor directives supported by single file applications called package, followed by the package name. Then, after the add character, you have to specify package version as well. Of course, you can look up package version on the NuGet.org website itself if you don't know it. You cannot skip package version here, and one might think that it would be nice if single file applications defaulted to the latest version. However, in my experience, it's dangerous and inconvenient if you don't want to pick up breaking changes or stay on one of the previous versions. Linkpad has this default behavior and I absolutely hated it. At the end of the day, both package name and version will translate directly into package reference attribute. Therefore, you can actually use version expressions, specifically the floating versions, meaning you actually can specify the latest package version, but this decision has to be explicitly set with the star symbol. It's not the default, and that's nice. Okay, so I have my Spectre console package referenced, so directory path can be directly passed in. All looks good here. Also, one of the nice features of Spectre Console is auto-generated help. Therefore, if I would pass the H flag, it would print me all the available options. However, when invoked with .NET Run, it will think that H flag is for the .NET Run command itself, not your single file application. To fix this, you can use the double dash argument, which forces .NET Run to pass everything after as is to the target program. So now it works. While we are here, know that Spectre console also grabs current executable path, and in our case is actually an auto-generated DLL somewhere. Note that if you are using shebang and executable permission in Linux, command arguments is not an issue at all, and they will just work naturally without issues. Of course, all of these single file applications will output something as well. In most cases, you can use console.brightline, just like we already did. Nothing is stopping you there from using any other libraries that format console output. For instance, using Spectre Console, I can format the output as a table, which looks a bit nicer. Let's have a look at how this actually works. As I mentioned, CS files are not scripts in runtime, as they are not actually interpreted. When you run them, .NET will create a temporary project and build artifacts, then place them into a temp directory. To see exactly where, just pass the verbosity flag. And here it is. You can explore this folder and see what's exactly going on. There is a folder named after a script file, and it's hash. I'm not sure what the hash value is, but it's something uniquely identifying. Rumors say that it's generated from build configuration and inputs. On Linux, I found those files in my home folder in localshare.net run file folder, which has identical structure to Windows, not surprisingly. There are bin and opt folders, like in a usual c project, with compiled binaries in them. There are also two marker files, build start cache, which is created when the build is actually running, just in case there are any concurrent runners, and build success cache, which is written on successful completion to mark that the artifact in this time folder is valid and can be reused by subsequent runs. Those markers are helpful for .NET SDK to perform various maintenance tasks, like prevent race condition, reuse binary artifacts on next runs, and avoiding unneeded rebuilds. They are safe to remove if you need to. These cache directories are files and files are not removed automatically by the .NET SDK, and there is no guarantee on when the cleanup happens, so it's left up to the OS-level temporary file maintenance. For instance, in Windows, temp files are cleaned up by the OS maintenance tasks. You can also use disk cleanup tools or just reboot, depending on the configuration. Of course, you should not rely on it for predictable behavior. You can also remove the directories manually or 
via script. It's pretty safe to do. There is another directive you can use in file-based apps called property, which is simpler to explain if you think that it translates to the property group element. This can be used for advanced scenarios, such as forcing a specific c -sharp version, like property lang version 11, if you want to upgrade or downgrade c -sharp version used in this script, or enabling and disabling implicit usings. Property implicit usings equals disable. If I turn this on and try to even use console.writeLine, we get a failure because using system is off now. You can also inject conditional defines. I can define conditional variables and then check the with if directive, just like in a normal c -sharp project. It's probably not very practical for file-based apps, but it's here. Note that .NET has tons of property groups available and it's not practical to list them all. Just know that you can do it. They must be in a format of name equals value. So you can't use, let's say, conditions on the property group that you can use in a normal c -sharp project. But hey, if you need to go more complicated, then file-based app is probably not the right choice anyway. Another great feature is ability to reference external c -sharp projects. You might ask, why would anyone need it? And I've got a perfect use case, creating small launchable scripts for the libraries you develop. Let's say I've got a library and I'll keep it really small for this example. Let's say we have a public class and a public function to look at. Now, I'd like to call this function as an external tool. Using the project directive, I can simply reference the project like this. The value of the directive should be a relative path to the project. But because my project is in the same folder as the script, it's just one word without any path delimiters. It's really useful to keep your library code clean and I like that it lets me avoid creating those extra console projects just to wrap up something really simple. You can also override .NET SDK used in file-based apps, which allows creating a bit more interesting things. For instance, you can actually create a fully functional HTTP web API server in just four lines of code, like this. Here I changed the SDK to web, created web app builder, and start the web API. I also mapped some path for demonstrating HTTP endpoints, which I can now call with anything, but I'll just use curl for, for this example, because curl is available out of the box virtually anywhere. It's even built into Windows. Or you can create a Windows Forms application. Windows only, of course, with some basic logic. That's an example, of course, because I don't know why would anyone do it in the right mind. But this just demonstrates the power of file-based apps. In order for Windows Form app to work, we have to do a few things. First, change the SDK, of course. Second, you need to explicitly set the target framework as Windows. Another hint, this is Windows only. Then set property use Windows Forms to true, as it would be in normal Visual Studio projects, and disable trimming, which conflicts with Windows Forms apps. I'm also creating form class descendant directly in the code here, as well as form layout and controls. Normally this would be auto-generated by a visual designer in Rider or Visual Studio, and it's really verbose. Single file apps are great for prototyping and small utilities. However, if those apps become more complicated and require advanced .NET features and grow beyond hundreds of lines of code, maybe need a proper IDE support and so on, you will probably consider making it into a C-sharp project. .NET SDK supports native conversion of file-based apps to projects. You just need to type .NET project convert and app file. It will ask you for target directory to put the files in and you're done. That's awesome. Things like package references, properties, SDK overrides, and so on are migrated. So it's not just half job done. You end up basically with two files, a cleaned up CS file with preprocessor directives, starting with hash stripped out and CS project file. What's interesting is convert tool makes this a console application, hence output type is exe. It also explicitly says .NET framework version, enables implicit usings, nullables, and AOT publishing. It also references NuGet package I have used before. You can also publish file-based apps to a native single file executable. Publishing is useful when you want to, let's say, get rid of SDK requirements or enable trimming and AOT or perform code signing or if security policies deny you from accessing the TAM folder 
or you just don't like the temp folder, and of course, a massive performance and startup boost. To perform publishing, just run .NET Publish App CS, and it will produce folder structure like artifacts, app name, with native executable insight for your platform. Honestly, how do we develop and debug this? I have good and bad news for you, depending on your philosophical preferences. Let's start with the bad news. Most of the tools are still not supporting it, except for VS Code via the C-Sharp DevKit plugin. It's pretty decent and stable. You can just open file-based app in VS Code as a file and have all the code analysis and IntelliSense VS Code provides. Rubo has it that Visual Studio is not planning to add support for this at all. And it sounds bad, but then thinking about it, it's not really clear how it would fit into Visual Studio ecosystem. Visual Studio is designed to work with project system, folder or solution based. And even if Visual Studio did support it, in my opinion, the experience would be fragmented. Of course, you can develop a console project in Visual Studio in a single file and then sort of migrate it into a single file, but that's not repeatable. And the fact that VS Code only supports it sort of gives me a hint it's designed for small and simple things. On the other hand, although it's not yet supported in JetBrains Rider, we have some good news here. It might be in version 2025.3.1 so I might review it separately when it comes out. Thanks for watching, and don't forget to press all the buttons YouTube throws at you today. Of course, only the good ones.